Hi class, in lesson 7.5, we will be looking at multiple representations of algebraic expressions. Learning targets for today, we will be using verbal descriptions, diagrams, algebraic expressions, tables, and graphs to represent different problem situations. In problem one, we are going to be searching for patterns. Number one asks us to calculate the perimeter of each shape. Each square unit is one unit by one unit. So go ahead and do letters, uh, letter A for number one, shape one, shape two, and shape three. If we take a look at letter A, remember the directions say that each square is one unit by one unit, so I have that labeled in shape number one. The perimeter is the distance around each shape. So the perimeter for shape one is going to be four units. Shape two, you're going to have eight units. And for shape three, you're going to have 12 units. For letter B then, I'd like you to draw the next three shapes following the pattern from question one in part A. Don't worry about doing any labeling. Uh, just draw the next three shapes for shape four, five, and six. Here is what your shapes should look like for letter B for shape four, shape five, and shape six. And hopefully, like we talked about at the beginning, you can start to see a pattern from the perimeter that you calculated in letters uh, in letter A for shape one, two, and three. Number two then down at the bottom of page 502 tells us to calculate the perimeter of each shape that you drew. Complete the table with your calculations. Now we already knew the perimeter for shape number one, two, and three, so you're going to have to finish up with four, five, and six. Here is what your table should look like for shape number four. You should have 16 units, shape five, 20 units, and shape six, 24 units. Let's look at the top of page 503 and numbers 3 and 4. Number 3 tells us to calculate the perimeter of the seventh shape now using the table. But now we have to explain how the table helped us to determine the perimeter of the seventh shape. And then number 4 tells us to calculate the perimeter of the twentieth shape. Explain again how you calculated your answer. If you look at our little word bubble over here, She's saying, what happened to shapes 8 through 19? Do I have to draw all of them? If you are starting to see the pattern, you shouldn't have to draw all of those shapes. You should be able to figure out what the perimeter is. So go ahead and do numbers 3 and 4. If we take a look at number 3 in the table, each number in the perimeter column is 4 more than the number before it. So you can determine the perimeter for the 6 shape by adding 4 to 20 to get 24. Then you can add 4 to 24 in order to get 28 units for the perimeter of the seventh shape. So each number in the perimeter column is four times the shape number. They are very important to understand that right here. So the perimeter for the seventh shape is four times seven, which would be 28 units. For number four then, using that pattern and using that thinking in number three, in order to calculate the perimeter of the 20th shape, that would be 80 units. If you notice the pattern in the table was to take the shape number and multiply it by 4, you would get the perimeter. So 20 times 4 is going to give you 80 units for a shape that has 20 of those squares. Let's answer number 5 and 6 at the bottom of page 503. Let's write an algebraic expression that describes the relationship between the shape number and the perimeter. Make sure that you define your variable. And for number six, if the pattern is going to then continue, what shape has a perimeter of 500 units? Explain how you determined your answer. If we take a look at number five, we're going to have S represent the shape number. So the algebraic expression that we are going to use then for the perimeter is 4 times s, 4s. If you used a different variable, that's fine. Uh, number 6, if the pattern continues then, what shape has a perimeter of 500 units? So if we know the shape now, we're going to be using the inverse operation of multiplication, which would be division. So if we divide uh, 500 divided by 4, 
we're going to get 125 units for our answer. Let's look at number 7 at the top of the next page. We are going to use our table from question 2 uh, in order to plot the points on the graph. And when you are done doing that, I want you to answer number 8. Would it make sense to connect the points on this graph? Explain why or why not. Remember, there is a key phrase that we should be thinking about uh, in order to answer the question, would it make sense to connect the points on this graph? Hopefully you remember that from um, chapters that we have already gone through. So go ahead and answer number 7 and 8. If we take a look at number 7, here is what your graph should look like for the points that you plotted from your table in question 2. Uh, just remember that we have to make sure that our axes, our x and y axis, are labeled appropriately. We have to make sure that we have appropriate intervals as well. I know that this particular graph does not have a title, uh, but make sure that you have titles for your graph as well so that it's very easy to interpret everything uh, that you are reading on the graph. Uh, for number eight, in this example, um, it would not make sense because the numbers on the x-axis are representing the number of the shape. Fractional parts, fractional parts, that's what we should be looking for. Fractional numbers for shapes do not make sense in this problem, uh, so we would say no as far as connecting the points on this graph. So the problem situation that we just went over was represented in several ways. We had a diagram of figures, we had a table of values, we had verbal descriptions, we wrote an algebraic expression, and we plotted points on a graph. These are often called multiple representations of a problem situation. And this is what we are going to be uh, working on moving forward in 7.5. At the top of page 505 for problem 2, we will start off now using a table of values. Number 1 says that the table shows the cost of a particular item. So I would like you to do letters A through D. Describe how the cost is related to the number of items. Letter B, define a variable for the number of items. C, write an algebra expression to represent the cost. And then D, use that expression to calculate the cost of 12 items and then enter the values in the table. Letter A for num number 1, the cost is going to be 6 times the number of the items. And for letter B, again, you can use any variable that you would like, but we are going to have N uh, equal the number of items. For letter C, our algebraic expression is going to be 6N, 6 times N. That's going to represent the total cost. And for letter D then, if we use that expression and plug in 12 items, 6 times 12 is going to be $72. And you can see that entered here then on the table. Back up at the top of the page. Let's take a look at number two. Now we're going to use the table to construct a graph. Notice in the directions, again, it says be sure to label the axes. You have your intervals already represented, so make sure that you label your axes. And if you want to go ahead and put a title on it, that's fine. Uh, number three, would it make sense then to connect the points on the graph? Explain why or why not. Here is what your graph should look like. The number of items should be labeled on the x-axis, and the cost in dollars should be labeled on the y-axis. Uh, for number three, Again, this would not make sense. The numbers on the x-axis are representing the number of items, and fractional parts of numbers of items are not going to make sense in this problem. Let's take a look at problem three. Now we will be using verbal descriptions to start off with our problem situation. Number one says a water tank holds 100 gallons of water. The tank is leaking at the rate of two gallons a minute. Determine how many gallons of water will be left in the tank if the leak continues for 1 minute, 10 minutes, 34 minutes, and 25 minutes. Do letters A through D for number 1. Here are what your answers should look like for A through D. We have 100 gallons, and it is leaking at the rate of 2 gallons per minute. 
So 100 times 2, we're going to have 98 gallons left for letter A. Uh, for letter B, again, 100 gallons. Uh, now we have 10 minutes. 100 minus 20 gives me 80 gallons left. For letter C, 100 gallons, 34 minutes this time. 2 times 34 gives you 68. 100 minus 68, you'll have 32 gallons left. And for 25 minutes, uh, 2 times 25 gives you 50. 100 minus 50, you'll have 50 gallons left. Let's look at number two and three at the bottom of page 507. Number two tells us to describe how you calculated each answer. Number three, we want to define a variable for the quantity that changes. Then write an algebraic expression for the amount of water in the tank. For number two, in order to calculate each answer, you're going to multiply the number of minutes by two and then subtract the product from 100. So if we define a variable, let's let t equal the number of minutes that the tank is leaking. Again, if you chose a different variable, that's fine. The algebraic expression that we should use then for the amount of, amount of water in the tank is 100 minus 2t. Let's take a look at number 4. Number 4 asks us how long it will take, it will take for the tank to be empty. Explain your reasoning. Uh, and then for number five, let's complete the table. For number four, the tank is leaking at a rate of two gallons per minute. So in 50 minutes, that tank is going to be empty. Uh, for number five, the number of minutes the tank is leaking is on the left column of your table. And the gallons of water that are remaining in the tank are on the right column of the table. So 1 minute, 98 gallons, 10 minutes, 80, 25, 50, 34 minutes would be 32 gallons, and 50 minutes, like we just said in number 4, the tank is going to be empty. Let's finish up problem number 3 with number 6 and 7. Let's use our table to construct a graph. Make sure that you label your axes, but it also does not have intervals labeled for you as well. So make sure that you label appropriate intervals for from the table also. Uh, number seven, finally then, answer again, would it make sense to connect the points on this graph and explain why or why not? Here is what your graph should look like for number six. The x-axis is labeled time in minutes. The y-axis is labeled water in the tank in gallons. And we have all of the appropriate points plotted on the graph. Um, in this example, yes, it would make sense to connect the points on this graph. The numbers on the x-axis represent time, and you can have uh, fractional parts of time. Uh, so the line that you would connect uh, to the points on this graph would make sense in this problem. If we take a look at problem four, uh, we will be using graphs in problem four as far as our multiple representation to get started. Uh, this is going to be homework for you, so make sure you do everything uh, for problem four. That is it for lesson 7.5 on multiple representations uh, using algebraic expressions. If you have any questions about the lesson, please let me know. Thanks.